Okay, so we're going to start a new unit on the education of Augie Morasti, and this is a, a memoir, which means it's a true story, a reflection of memory of the author. In this case, the author is Joseph Augie, August, or Augie uh, Morasti. Um, so he is telling his memories, recounting uh, what happened to him uh, as a child when he was um, in residential schools, uh, in a residential school. So he went to St. Therese Residential School. And these are his memories of what uh, occurred and it acts as a kind of sort of testimony, uh, historical account of what he, he went through. Um, it's his own account. It doesn't necessarily uh, reflect all survivors of residential schools, so this is his story, um, but it is a story that I think is very important um, in terms of where we are in Canada um, and where we want to sort of move towards uh, reconciliation. Um, so this is a, a very important novel in that uh, context. So for this unit, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about um, Augie Morasti or Joseph August Morasti um, and how this memoir came to be. Um, but I also want to do a little bit of background information on residential schools uh, just to give us a little bit of historical context. I'm sure uh, many of you are familiar with uh, residential school systems and maybe have read other uh, uh, literature that have discussed residential schools. Um, I know it's on the curriculum these days for most high schools to study residential schools, but uh, just to keep it in context, I mean, I'm not that old, and when I was growing up, it wasn't on the curriculum. So this is part of the context that we have to understand that a lot of these stories, a lot of this history has been silenced or not acknowledged in dominant culture. It hasn't been part of our education or our understanding um, and I think it's a really important part uh, of change and um, is to sort of you know have this knowledge and, and understanding for what happened. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of background on the residential school system and then we'll talk a little bit about how this memoir came to be. Um, just to note, the I said the author is Joseph August Morasti, but there is a kind of co-author uh, for this text, David Carpenter, and I'll talk a little bit more about him as well um, and how this novel or this memoir uh, came to be. Okay, before we get into some details, I want you to look at these two uh, pictures. Uh, these two photographs of the same child so uh, just to give you a little bit of information so it's the same child in both images um, and I want you to sort of think about brainstorm uh, give me the first idea or words that pop into your head when you look at this image uh, consider the transformations that are occurring um, and you can use your own background knowledge to also, um, you know, read into the image if that's something you're comfortable doing. Uh, but tell me what you think is happening uh, in between the image on the left and the image on the right. So this is kind of a before and after um, image. So tell me words, reactions, thoughts in relation to... Uh, this image or these two pictures of the same child. So here's a definition of the residential school system um, and I'll just read you this definition and I think it is an important one. Uh, so it says the residential school system was a collaboration between the government of Canada and the mainstream churches to educate First Nations children in an environment that removed them from the influences of their family and culture. The explicit goal was to civilize and Christianize the children and to teach them basic trades for the boys and domestic skills for the girls. The system was based on a colonial racist worldview 
that Euro-Canadian society was superior and First Nations culture and people were inferior. In its final report, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada called the Indian, Indian residential school system cultural genocide. So if we unpack this paragraph, uh, it does bring up a lot of uh, important points in relation to the residential school system. So in that first sentence, uh, we have the acknowledgement that this was a collaboration between the Canadian government and all of the mainstream churches. So, um, you know, Anglican, Catholic, uh, Lutheran churches uh, in Canada to educate First Nations children, and that includes Métis children and Inuit children. Um, and it and it was a almost it was like a boarding school, a very religious uh, education, but it was um, very sort of explicit in the rules of the residential schools that children were removed from their families, and this was a means of uh, assimilating the children into dominant, in this case, Euro-Canadian uh, white society. Um, the goals were to civilize and Christianize the children and teach them basic education uh, and often trades or domestic skills. And <clears throat> in, those, in that goal to civilize and Christianize, we, we can sort of unpack those words and really kind of deconstruct um, this idea, the ideology behind the residential schools. Um, implicitly implied is there is this idea that, you know, Euro-Canadian white society was uh, understood or believed to be superior, to be civilized, to, you know, ha be, um, you know, uh, the height of, of uh, culture and you know there's this racial superiority this ideology uh, mindset that was at play in the creation of residential school systems and there was the perception that if you were not white or you're not Euro-Canadian uh, you were less than um, you were uncivilized you were inferior um, so this was the perception that uh, the government of Canada and mainstream society had of First Nations families and children and culture. So they wanted to erase, remove children from their families and place them into schools that would kind of indoctrinate them or teach them or assimilate them into dominant culture, effectively removing them from their families and all the traditions that were part of their family and culture, including their languages and um, any cultural traditions, their own spirituality, all of that identity, all of that was uh, supposedly or supposed to be stripped away from the children. And um, the last line of this paragraph, we get uh, the idea that um, this was an act of genocide. Um, they term it cultural genocide, um, but you know, you can sort of just call it a genocide um, in a way because you know when you remove somebody from their family. And um, in this case, many children did suffer and were viewed as inferior. Many children died in residential schools. And we'll learn um, through Augie Morasti's memoir um, just how the children were abused and mistreated and um, suffered inhumanely at the hands of their guardians. So we can call what happened to uh, this group of children uh, an attempt at genocide. So um, 
probably most of you are familiar with the term um, or the the implicit explicit goal or implicit goal, I guess, of the residential school system to quote kill the Indian in the child. Um, but this was this aim of the school system that wanted to uh, use education as a, a form of civilization or civilizing the children or um, teaching them of the ways of Euro-Canadian or white society. Uh, the first residential school was established in Canada in 1880, um, but way back in 1844 uh, we had some of the earliest official documents uh, which recommended that education was the means of assimilating uh, the Indian population of Canada and using boarding schools, taking children away from their families, away from the parental influence and put it, placing them into boarding schools where they would uh, learn and be taught uh, these ideas of Euro-Canadian culture. Um, so Stripping the children away from their family was a way for them to remove the child from their parental influences, away from their language, away from their traditions and cultures and identity. Um, by 1950, or until 1950, First Nations children between the ages of 5 and 16 were forced to attend these schools. Uh, so some, some families thought this was, you know, a way for their children to uh, improve themselves or have opportunities. Uh, their families uh, were forced to have their children um, taken away uh, and sent to these schools. So it depends on the family and the, the community, what happened. Um, Augie Morassi will learn his parents, uh, they were very religious, so they, they voluntarily sent their children to the school, um, but maybe they you know, they didn't know what was going on at the time either, so they thought that their children would have a great education and there was a lot of hypocrisy and deceit um, covering over silencing the children and what was really going on behind the walls of these schools. Um, so this will, we'll see firsthand through Augie's eyes as a child what he went through and what was inflicted upon him in terms of abuse. And uh, the last point there is the federal government has estimated that at least 150,000 uh, First Nations, Inuit and Métis students pass through the system. Um, so we know now that um, not just those individuals have been affected uh, by this system. There, there are intergenerational effects of the residential school system in, in terms of families and communities and um, you know generation the next subsequent generation were also affected by the experiences of residential schools and we'll talk more about uh, intergenerational trauma as we go on in this unit but uh, it is an important thing to also recognize that you know 150,000 students may have passed through that system but consider the, the larger legacy of how this historical event has sort of trickled down um, through generations of families and, and communities and even if we see the effects today in, in Canadian society of how uh, we're still dealing with the aftermath of uh, this legacy. Uh, just a little bit of clarification. Um, so the term cultural genocide was used there in our uh, paragraph describing uh, the residential schools, um, but we could, you could uh, distinguish between a physical genocide and a cultural genocide. Um, we've, uh, you know, you, we have a context of the Holocaust uh, and Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany as probably the most uh, definitive uh, example of genocide in the you know 20th century um, physical genocide refers to the mass mass killing of members of a targeted group 
Um, and in that case, it was through, you know, mass executions, mass murder um, of the uh, of uh, six million or estimates of six million uh, Jewish people. Cultural genocide uh, can be defined as the destruction of those structures and practices that allow uh, a group to continue as a group. So it disturbs or dis so it disturbs or destroys uh, the family structures, the community structures, uh, and practices the traditions, the cultural, the language um, that allow a group to continue from one generation to the next. So there was an attempt on uh, by residential schools uh, to disrupt and destroy First Nations cultures and disrupt the group, split up families as a way to prevent uh, cultural transmission between parents and children. Um, but we can see this in context of a larger context of colonialism and uh, racist ideologies um, where we see the seizure of land, uh, we see uh, populations moved and transferred, we see um, movement restricted and languages banned, spiritual leaders and spiritual traditions um, forbidden, and the disruption of uh, families. So all of these elements together uh, were part of this colonial uh, system within uh, Canada's history. And residential schools was just one part of a larger context of genocide uh, that the Canadian government was uh, using to essentially destroy uh, the practices of uh, First Nations cultures and in a way also destroy a group of people. It is an attempted genocide. So whether you want to see this as the eradication of a group of people um, or eradication of the culture of a group of people, I think we're sort of uh, in that gray area within um, the historical context of, of Canadian society. And you could argue that uh, residential schools were also uh, an attempt at uh, genocide, physical genocide. And some people have made that argument. Um, okay, so let's take a little, uh, I just want to introduce one other key term before we move on, um, and that is assimilation. Um, so assimilation was kind of the key term that I wanted you to pick up uh, when we were doing that visual comparison of the children. Uh, and assimilation is a part of the goal of residential schools. So um, we talked about a little bit that they were meant to um, civilize and Christianize the children um, and that was part of this assimilation process. So to take away or to absorb uh, into mainstream culture a group of people. In this case it was children. Um, children are seen as more of a blank slate, more flexible, more adaptable and they are not sort of uh, ingrained or entrenched in traditions and culture as much as parents are so they're more changeable or fluid in terms of uh, their ability to learn new things so uh, that was part of the targeted group uh, of children removed from their parental family influences and placed into the, the residential schools. Uh, so assimilation is the cultural absorption of a minority group into the main cultural body. And main and cultural body in this case was Euro-Canadian society uh, or dominant white culture. And uh, the minority culture here loses characteristics of their culture such as language, tradition, and even self-identity. Um, so we do see that in residential schools where the children were forbidden from speaking their home languages, uh, 
and they were forbidden from uh, practicing their traditions and they, they were sort of lost those traditions uh, by being ingrained or assimilated into dominant culture. And then this has also had an effect in terms of, you know, your psychology, your, your self identity um, is changed as well. You don't quite fit into your family or your, your home culture. Um, and maybe you perceive of yourself as different from your family, um, but based on your education. So there's also this sort of conflict of self uh, that is involved uh, with residential schools. And when we're thinking of theme, in relation to the education of Avi Marasti, this idea of assimilation is also closely connected to this idea of loss. Uh, there's a loss of innocence, a loss of identity, a loss of tradition, a loss of language. All of that um, is a part of the tragedy of uh, the residential school system. So. Uh, assimilation doesn't mean gaining a new culture, it means losing a very important part of yourself.